Reticulated python. Yeah, I know. 26 feet. Out of 41 species, feet? the reticulated python is the longest python and snake on record. The longest known reticulated python measured 26.2 feet long. Oh my god. Longer than five grand pianos lined up. It was found at a construction site in Malaysia in April 2016 and died oh. shortly after its capture, live science previously oh, reported. Oh, sorry you died, buddy. The Malaysian snake was longer than Medusa, the longest captive snake in the world, which measured in at 25.1 feet, according to Guinness World Records. Holy smokes. What made them consider using a grand piano as a unit of measure, though? We'll talk about snakes. <laughs> I don't know how often the two come together, you know? Grand piano on one hand, snake in the other. Who knows? This sucks because I also just did the video on like weird things animals swallowed and I'm just thinking, okay, I'm 5'6", right? If it's 26 feet, that's at least two and a half of me, right? I'm, that's probably very bad math. I'm not even mad about it. The fact that they found this record-breaking snake on a construction site, imagine being there, you know? You're just like pushing a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> carrying some tools all of a sudden 26 and a half foot snake whoosh, right by you what do you even do at that point you just give up on the building just it's no longer being constructed we're all going home i think that's a good call like they can just they can just swallow you and that's it and you're just kind of stuck you know like you're just kind of stuck there that's yeah that freaks me out i mean i actually think snakes are very cute <laughs> Sorry about it. I think they're cute. They got a little boop snoop, you know, just boop. The appropriately named Goliath beetle, genus named Goliathus, is never seen in the wild outside of the tropical forests of Africa, Man. which is a good thing, since this insect weighs as much as a full-grown no. gerbil. However, there's a big asterisk attached to the Goliath beetle's world biggest bug is, title. Is there? This insect is twice as large as a larva than it is as a full-grown adult. What? If you're feeling adventurous, what? you can raise your very own Goliath beetle. Experts advise, seriously, a diet of packed dog food or cat food. What? Either wet or dry will do just fine. What do you mean it's, what do you mean the larva is bigger? Ugh, like, ugh, okay, I don't like beetles. Oh my God. <laughs> you're, you're feeding your bug like a dog? Holy smokes. One time, I put my shoe in like a water shoe that when I was on vacation and there was like a cockroach that crawled out of it. So every time I see beetles, I'm like, no, no. I mean, they just look pretty wicked to be honest. Isn't it like, don't people do like Goliath beetle like competitions? Like they bring their biggest beefiest bugs to duke it out in like bug mortal combat. It's pretty wicked. That's honestly like, that's not even scary. That's just cool. Like I feel like beetles are just like pretty badass. You know? But you know, what's hilarious is like beetles, Ugh. but like big snakes. Nah, oh, I don't understand it either. It's okay. Like uh, people, people are afraid of spiders. People are afraid of centipedes, but beetles, beetles are wicked. And you're not gonna find one of these like chilling in your home, like trying to eat your snacks, right? Like they're, <laughs> they're hard to find in the wild as said in the video. That's crazy. Just imagine holding one. Like what would that feel like? Just the exoskeleton is so big weighted like a freaking gerbil oh my goodness it looks like they've got some pretty powerful claws too the way they uh, dig into that little tree stump they're on deuce is the name that was given to quite possibly the tallest oh, dog hello. to ever exist he was a great dane who was 1.118 oh. meters or 44 it's inches dog, tall horse. when measured in october 2011. Mm. i wanted a big name for a big dog mm. i knew that he would be of course of course this he did prized canine was owned by denise dorlag mm. and her family in otsego michigan zeus wasn't oh. Just oh, tall either. He packed plenty of meat on his boat. Excellent. Weighing up to 70 kilograms. Oh, this is quality content. That's not, that's perfect. I would just, he doesn't, like, I mean, he doesn't know he's that big, you know? Like, dogs don't know. But we know, and I just wanna, I just wanna collapse on the floor with a guy like that. Just Marmaduke right there. That's the, that's the real life comic strip. <laughs> he's just walking around. Those legs, man, that dog is so far off the ground. Like you can get like a, a couple other dogs riding piggyback to go under him when he's just standing up straight. <laughs> like that's insane. So safe, so safe. Oh, I love it. 
Oh, what a great way to start the day. It's not a lap dog. Imagine like he thinks he's one of those dogs that thinks he's a lap dog. So you're sitting on the couch and all of a sudden he's right on top of you. Just all 70 kilos of him as you're trying to watch TV, trying to see around his big head so you can watch Modern Family or whatever. Oh man, what a, what a pooch. I gotta admit, I feel a little sorry for this guy. He might look impressive, but I can't imagine how difficult it must be navigating through trees on a daily basis with that headgear dude. like this guy. Oh, buddy. The steer named Lurch rough, is gonna Lurch. make an appearance in the record books for many years to come after recording possibly oh. the biggest set of horns on a steer ever. Right on, buddy. Oh, man. I don't even know what to say about that. Those just look like... Like, like jousting lances coming out the side of his head. Just, those are enormous. That poor guy, he's just like, nom, 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 with his big horn. Oh, I swore, sorry guys. With his big horns? It's like Satan from Tenacious D, or that big red guy from Legend. Just, those are just absolutely phenomenally large horns. There's just like the small cow next to him and there's that frame, it's just like, hey, that poor guy, I hope he doesn't get made fun of like Rudolph did. God, yeah, that's gotta suck. That's gotta be unwieldy as all get out. You just you can't walk anywhere without just clipping it off the side of something. My goodness, do you think they're heavy? I bet you they're heavy. Are they like um like deer or, or stags where it's like they'll fall off eventually? I don't think so, eh? They're not gonna shed those at any point. The poor guy, that poor guy, man. I love it. I I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> this this to me smacks a little a little questionable. I got it's one of those I gotta see it to believe it uh, until I can like grab one of them with my hand. Imagine be being labeled as the largest yes. living cat on the yes. planet. You'd really feel like the king of the jungle. You Hercules are. Hercules is that Her cat. Absolutely. This is our big friend Apollo and he is a liger. He lives at the Myrtle Beach Safari in South Carolina, <laughs> USA. He is an adult male liger, which is a what hybrid of the lion and tigress. What a dude. His total length is 3.33 meters, and he weighs 418 kilos. A real big cat. I'm gonna spend a lot on catnip for even to get that effect. Oh my goodness. Big boy. What a big boy. Oh my god. I mean, I knew ligers existed because of Napoleon Dynamite. You know? It's a liger. Napoleon Dynamite would be real impressed. The liger? It's a liger. <laughs> That's another animal I just want to like curl up with and be like, it's okay, you could kill me, but you won't because you're just too big, why would you? You know? He just looks lazy. What do you do with an animal that size? Especially one that, you know, has teeth like that and a hankering for meat. As soon as I saw like the the like lion-esque being, I was like, it's gonna be a liger. I love a liger. I'm in for a liger. Do you, do you think it knows that it's the biggest one? Like, does, does it meet any other ligers and just like realize that it's like 150% bigger? This absolute beast oh, of a horse is one like... of the largest draft horses on the this planet. Is a horse? More specifically known as the Dutch Draft, Dang. they are a Dutch breed of horse that can reach truly massive wow. sizes. So it's fortunate that they're known to have a nice, calm temperament, or else they could probably kick the absolute gubbins out of everyone and take over the planet. Given their muscles, they are often used for draft work. Wow. The horse in the photo That's... is one of the largest currently alive weighing almost 800 kilograms. Oh my goodness. That's not like, that's not a horse, that's a full on tank. I love how that woman is trying so hard, you know? Like, and the only way she's able to do that is because the horse is letting her. Look at this tiny, tiny person besides the horse, <laughs> holding onto it with one rope. This person like is not doing anything. It's, 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 they're along for the ride at this point. They're actually they're wearing rollerblades, and the horse is gonna run off, and they're gonna ride it forever and ever because there's no way that a person tugging on that horse would do anything. The horse is not even aware that that person's there. But it's so cute when they're like, "Oh, gentle giant," because I do feel like some animals, the bigger they get, the less scary they are. You know, even though they probably could kill you. Like bigger dogs usually are like. Oh, I love you, man. But smaller dogs are like, I'm gonna get you. Same with horses. That's that's a that's a that's a magical, mystical fairy tale horse that only the king of kings rides. He can eat you and just swallow you whole, and then you, 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 you contribute to its muscle mass. They're just gentle, but also very smart. So watch out. 
watch out for a horsey. This is the kind of creature where it's like you realize how small you truly are. <laughs> like it's just, you look at it and you're like, damn, I'm gonna die someday. <laughs> I'm not immortal. The Goliath frog is the world's largest frog. It is able to grow up to 32 wow. centimeters in length and can weigh up to four kilograms. Whoa. They can only be found along the equator of Western Africa. These creatures aren't dangerous and can live up to the age of 21 when in 21. captivity. 21 year old frog? They die young in the wild as they fall prey to giant lizards and crocodiles there. Yeah, that is something I've actually never, never seen. That's, I didn't even, what? That's one hell of a frog. Like that reminds me of like Gamakichi from Naruto. If anybody uh, knows that one. It's not a toad, it's a frog, but like it's got the same stance. It's got the same look in its eyes. I have, I like frogs. Like I remember collecting tadpoles and being like, oh, they're so cool. But then there's one frog that were, like gives birth in its back and it freaks me out. And ever since then, I've just been like, ooh, frogs, but know if I could be mad at that or afraid of it. So giant lizards and giant crocodiles are eating giant frogs. I feel like those giant lizards and crocodiles would be freakier than this. You're trying your best and they're very impressive. Are these like the frogs legs that the French like to eat? Like I feel like like that, that's a delicacy that I personally have never had and I remember like a bunch of jokes being made about frogs legs and like the cartoons I watched growing up. Are these the frogs that have the legs that people want? Because they, they've got some beef on those. <laughs> these tiny insects can be a nuisance on their own. Now picture that one woman. that's four uh. times the size of a regular fly. I don't want to, a though. Lot more that's stubborn. the thing. The Midas fly is what we're talking about. It can be as long as 10 centimeters in length and have a wingspan of six centimeters. But the good thing is that it's only found in arid areas. That's good, yeah. Not just anywhere. Does it sting? Does it bite? Does it hurt you? <laughs> you gotta know. That is a good thing. Because, point is, it can still fit under my foot. That's so mean. I feel like these could be the protein in the future. You know, just to really gross everyone out. Like, if we just started, like, freeze drying these and covering them in, like, Cheeto powder, you know, and get lots of protein in there, a good crunch. At what point? At what point? There's more of them than there are of us, right? As a society, we're ready to move on to bug based meals. Delicious. The oh, largest crab in the come world, on. Also, the most expensive. It is almost four meters oh, long. Oh, it's a Lego city. Out from claw to claw, <laughs> but it is very unlikely for you to come across any as they live far below the water's surface. To get one, you'll have to go fishing specifically for them. They need special equipment as their sharp claws can cause nasty injuries. But it seems as though they're tasty enough to be worth the risk. If you fancy a Japanese spider crab for your next meal, then head on over to Okinawa and have your dreams come to life for 500 bucks. What? Oh man, my tummy started gurgling because I do enjoy some crab. I will say that is my that is my absolute favorite delicacy. Get out of here. Five hundred bucks for crab? I guess it would be pretty tasty. I don't know. I feel like that just it looks too big to be tasty. Just all the bug meat in there, you know, like crustaceans are just the bugs of the sea. Ugh. Crabs. The reason that one freaked me out is because they they are like sea spiders. And that is a, what is it, a spider crab? Four meters, man. Four meters. I don't know if I can get past the fact that it looks like that, you know? Like, I don't know if I want to be like, you know, like schlorping the, uh, the insides out of some, uh, some shells, if that's, that's what's gonna be staring me down. They keep the eyeballs there, everything. Oh, gosh. Oh, are don't quite want grotty to. when you look at them closely. <sighs> but when you bump into this breed, it will be difficult to get any closer if you're squeamish about these sorts of crawlers. The average earthworm is about a meter in length, but these ones can grow three times longer and be about three inches in diameter. They can easily be confused for an adult snake. You won't come across these creepy crawlers often though. They only exist deep in the wild around Sumaco Volcano. Ugh. No. Thank you. No thank you. I don't know if I was ready for that, to, 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 to be aware of a worm that size. I thought that was gonna be one of those massive millipedes. You know, like the big black ones. Have you ever seen those? I thought it was gonna be like that. And I garden too. So these shouldn't be that scary to me, but it's just like, imagine just digging in your garden and seeing that. You know, we all grew up finding earthworms in the grass. You know, when it rains, you see a couple plastered on the sidewalk. But you know, they're like, 
you know, like from from here to here, and they're you know little itty bitty baby like 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 straw size, you know, like drinking straws. And then there's these guys that are snaky, absolutely beefed up, incredible. Oh my god! And imagine if it rained, and then like just you know when worms come up after it rains, and then just dozens of them just just. Just come on on out to play. Come on, on. Nobody wants to see that. And you'd be like tiptoeing everywhere and crying. I mean, I would be. I'm not gonna be going near those uh, those volcanoes because I don't know if my mind could handle actually encountering an earthworm this size. That's like a creature from Archie's Weird Mysteries. You know what I mean? That's just something. That's just something nobody wants to see. That's just something nobody wants to see. They can stay underground. Man. This cryptid is said to be a reptilian creature standing seven feet tall and lives in the scape or swamp near the farming town of Bishopville in South Carolina. The swamp monster was first spotted almost 30 years ago. In 2015, the lizard man of scape or swamp made another appearance. A photo taken by a woman on a cell phone shows a bizarre looking creature that she swears is the, the lizard picture. man. Oh. It's an impressively what? muscled creature <laughs> Right with clawed toes and clawed fingers. The lavender colored critter also has a long kangaroo like tail, red eyes, and a snub nosed face. Are we sure that's not like a monster from like a Power Rangers episode, like before it gets huge? Like, that's just what the Power Rangers fight in the first half of the episode? <laughs> I don't know if I believe that or this first one more with the extra green guy with the big lizard eye. <laughs> looks like something out of a kaiju movie, like a low budget kaiju movie. Looks like one of the one of the guys in the rubber suits on break, like going to grab a smoke. <laughs> oh, lady, I I don't know how to feel about that. Like it's a cool suit. Like why did you just admit that like your husband is really into making rubber monster suits instead of being like I got a picture of it just walking. It's like it's like <laughs> just walking along like that. <laughs> Come on. Oh, hello. Hello, big lad. Just wandering through the tall grass. This kind of feels like a Pokemon encounter. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a big boy. Big hairy lad wandering through the woods. Hold on. Is this from <laughs> Squatch Me Now? That is a incredible <laughs> channel name. Like, that's like, mm, chef's kiss. Squatch me now. Oh my goodness. I can't even be mad at that. That's just like that's that's a 10 out of 10 Incredible name for anything to do with Sasquatch. So I'm assuming we're Sasquatch hunting here We've seen a big beefy humanoid shape hustling through some tall grass Can't really tell exactly what it is because it's far away. It's a little grainy but it's not, it's not moving like a human usually would, and there seems to be a lot of hair involved. It's one solid color, head to shoulders. Didn't see any knees and toes, unfortunately. Our next guest may have taken one of the best ever pictures of the Loch Ness Monster. A creature about two and a half meters long has been captured on camera from the shores in Scotland. It's sparking renewed interest in the legend of Nessie and has many asking, could this be the most compelling evidence yet? This is the latest sighting of what's believed to be the Loch Ness Monster. Ripples in the water and what appears to be the body of a creature. I don't know, what, when's this from? It's, uh, it, it obviously got picked up by a news broadcast, so it must be pretty compelling, but I, 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 I wanna see these pictures myself. I wanna investigate them instead of just kind of them flashing up there real quick. It's interesting. I would love for Nessie to be real, especially if Nessie can't vacation, you know? At least, at least she can get some attention, hang out in her hometown. Boy, but Nessie's like not like a scary cryptid, you know? Like Nessie's like pretty chill uh, as a, you know, I've been told. Anyways, I've never met the Loch Ness Monster personally, but uh, the people who claim to know a whole lot more about this aqua dinosaur say that it's pretty, pretty well tempered, pretty chill. I don't know, I wouldn't be too worried. Even if it was real, like, just let it be, you know? Well, Pennsylvania, locals have reported sightings of a strange creature lurking in the woods. They say it's a white Bigfoot, six to seven feet Ooh. tall with shaggy fur covering its entire body. Residents often hear strange noises too, low groans and rustling in trees. In 2008, this video surfaced and quickly went viral. It was filmed by a man who heard noises coming from his yard that backs onto woodland. Oh, hello. Clip, you can see oh, a wow. strange looking creature. 
It pauses for a yeah. split second, then darts off into the darkness. It has deep black eyes, a long cone-shaped head, and is covered in white fur. Are we sure it's got deep black eyes, though? Or is it just because it's nighttime and we're on a camera with, like, night vision on? I don't know. That's scary, though. That's, like, a real freaky thing to come across in the woods, especially because it's, like, so bright. You think you'd see it coming from a little further away, right? The white Bigfoot. I've never heard of that, to be honest. I've heard of Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Skunk Ape. But white Bigfoot, hmm. new cryptids all the time. Holy smokes. It is also known as the Mayaka ape and is Mayaka? a hominid Ooh, the skunk that ape. inhabits North Carolina, hey. Florida, and Arkansas. A Florida man claimed to capture this elusive creature on film while visiting the Mayaka State Park in Sarasota County. You can see images from the video here, but the video's poor quality makes it difficult to discern any features or details. It's basically a dark figure in a field. The witness described the creature as a large, hairy hominid running upright on two legs. No word on whether the creature needed a shower or not. Reports of the skunk ape date back to the 1940s, Ooh. but were most common in the 1960s and 70s. I talked about the skunk ape. Here it is again. And speaking of smelly creatures, ladies and gentlemen, skunk ape. My goodness. These pictures look a whole lot like the uh, stuff we were getting at the beginning from Squatch Me Now, without the benefit of being from the source Squatch Me Now. So I don't know. Maybe maybe it's the same. Maybe we're, we're 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 thinking that the skunk ape and the sasquatch are two different species. Maybe one just you know is in a area more uh, predisposed to making things stink, and therefore they're just distant. They're not even cousins. They're 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 siblings that got separated at birth and now live in different parts of the continental United States. Oh boy, I don't know. Residents were finding livestock dead in their backyards with puncture wounds on their necks. Chickens and other animals were also vanishing without a trace. Eventually, this footage surfaced when two kids said they had an encounter with an alien in a local park. An alien? They claimed they were heading home from a party when they heard some strange noises. They took out their phones, and this is the footage they captured. Oh, I know this Behind footage. A, tree, a bizarre, long winged mm. creature begins to walk mm. across the grass. It has a bulbous black head and slim body. The figure's hind legs look like that of a human, but most strikingly, it uses two front arms to stalk eerily through the park. These arms. These arms are made for walking, Sonny. When I catch you, I'm gonna puncture your neck and I'm gonna drink your blood, just like that livestock, just like them chickens. I'm gonna catch you. <laughs> That's what I imagine he sounds like. <laughs> Yeah, this is a classic clip. I didn't realize there was a backstory like that. Or is Slapped Ham just manufacturing a tale? Who knows? Either way, pretty freaky. I don't like how it comes out from the tree, and it's so obviously like much wider than the tree, but it like it, it stops before like the tree ends. Like it doesn't have an end point, it just kinda like appears like it's walking out of a portal. Maybe it's coming out of like the upside down, like in Stranger Things, right? There was a tree portal in that. People could just like walk in and out of that, go to a different dimension. Ooh, it's a dimension walker and it's got funny front legs. The feed of two baby bald eagles was photobombed, and some say Ooh. it might have been none other than Bigfoot. Initially, only the two baby eagles could be seen in the camera frame as they nested in a forest in Beulah, Michigan. But then, a dark figure on two legs can be seen oh. through the trees below. You can see pictures from the video that seem to show the figure, although the pictures are admittedly blurry. It halts, then walks through the trees and jumps over a branch. After landing on a slope a few feet below, the figure disappears into the shadows. Oh! <laughs> I guess. Maybe it's the skunk ape. Maybe it's Sasquatch. Maybe it's Bigfoot. Maybe it's a mermaid. But they took their tail off, and now they're just walking on two legs. I don't know. Uh, I feel like I need I need I need to see this video footage myself. This man narrating it isn't enough for me and my 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 immense curiosity as to how this hominid creature is strolling through the woods. That's great though, that like whatever wildlife photographer got up there, you know, looking to catch some footage of some little baby bald eagles, like that was nowhere near the most interesting thing going on there because in fact, the bald eagles of no consequence were focused on Bigfoot down below. It's a curious little clip that apparently shows a real unicorn oh, grazing in a, a field. A real unicorn? <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not known where this footage was taken and details are scarce at best. 
In the distance, you can see what looks like two horses grazing in a field of grass, one brown and one white. However, it becomes obvious that the white horse-like creature has a single horn protruding from its head. For centuries, man has been describing a mythical beast with a single large horn. The ancient Greeks wrote about a legendary animal that could only be tamed by a virgin. Their horns were said to have healing properties and could turn poison into drinkable water. Also, Voldemort likes to eat them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the fact that there's so few details on this and nobody got any closer to really investigate a seemingly docile creature uh, makes me wonder about the, uh, the veritability here, the veracity, the realness, the quality. Because it could very well just be somebody slapped the fake horn on a white horse and let it run. They were like, ha ha, it'll be funny when somebody sees this and thinks it's a real unicorn. Or at least it'll be funny until it runs full force into somebody thinking it's doing a headbutt and then puts a freaking hole in them. Who knows? In 2016, a strange cryptid creature Ice was monster. spotted swimming through the freezing waters of the Chena River, Alaska. In October of that year, Bureau of Land Management employee Craig McCarr spotted a long, icy creature swimming through murky river water. He grabbed a quick video to prove his sighting, and soon the internet was debating whether Nessie from Loch Ness in Scotland had taken a vacation to North America. In the footage, you can see what looks like a 15-foot long creature undulating through the water. It appears to have icicles stuck on its back from the freezing condition. That one's a hard one to comment on. I feel like it's not Nessie. It's Nessie, Nessie doesn't have a passport. There's no way that Nessie did international travel. Nessie stays in Lake Loch Ness. That's that. The government won't give her a passport. It's too bad, really. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what I think about this one. Is it just like a whale that has found its way off and is close to death? Is it just a big... Like, maybe it's like it's like two big logs held together by a rope or something, and that's why it's undulating like that. Uh, maybe it is an ice monster. And if that's the case, hell yeah. I want more ice monsters. I want something that can breathe ice breath, like a dragon can breathe fire. Although dragons are equally cryptic, aren't they? Oh boy. Really heading down the, uh, the wrong path here. <laughs> Looking for real fake monsters. Maids are known as mythical creatures that are half woman, half fish, and the male equivalent is called a merman. Well, a man mm -hmm. named Paul Jones was taking a walk along a beach in Norfolk in the UK and claims to have found a mermaid washed up there on the shore. But this one appeared to be out of her element, oh. having left her warm tropical environment for the chilly waters of the North Sea. She also appeared to be quite dead. Images appear to show <laughs> the decaying body of a human-like creature with a fish tail. And while the tail and head seem to be intact, the midsection of the body is rotting. The pictures were posted online, Ooh. and many seem to support the claim that these pictures do in fact represent an actual mermaid. What do you think it smells like? Like, I've, I, my, when I was a kid, my dog rolled in a fish that uh, ended up on the beach like that, you know, half rotten. just thought it was great, but it smelled like death. You think it smells that bad or you think it's worse? Because there's the mermaid aspect, there's the human aspect with the fish aspect, making for like, an ungodly beach stink. You think, uh, I mean, I, I'm asking the questions that everyone is too scared to ask, obviously. Whether it's real or fake is of no consequence. I want to know about the, the smell statistics of this rotting mermaid body, okay? Tell me more. Just walking around on the security camera. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, it's a shadow person. Oh my God drags him away? Does he get away? Holy smokes. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh, wow. Yeah, I would I would not, not want to go back and work there after that. Yikes. You imagine just walking down the hall in the middle of the night and then you get pulled by a shadowy figure down the hallway. Ouch. This the security camera footage, you know, it's a, it's pretty pretty quality, you know. That's a <laughs> just going back afterwards, asking the guy at the office, like, hey, can I see the footage from last night? Something really weird happened, and then you see an actual humanoid figure in darkness <laughs> pulling at your ankles. You quit. You move. You leave the country. You change your name. You uh, burn off your fingerprints. Oh my gosh, this is so small. <laughs> oh, hello. 
Is that a shadowy figure slamming doors? And then again, the ghost was caught on camera in a mirror in his living room. In a room. mirror. Oh, okay. Oh. I don't like that. Do not like that one bit. Mm -mm. No, thank you. Just knowing that that's somewhere in your home. Closing doors, shutting windows, causing problems. Especially if you go back to that footage and you can, you can pick it out. You can guarantee that something's there. It's not just like, you know, oh, the wind blew it shut or like I'm imagining things. It's like there's, there's little bits of proof in there that something is not quite right. You know, it also could be a little trick of the lens, little, little, little glitch going down, but I'd be looking over my shoulder uh, at every opportunity at that point. That's, that's, I think you gotta move. You gotta move. You gotta sell the house. Don't tell the realtor about the ghost. Somebody else can deal with it. Just go. Get out. Go. Ooh. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful tone. Where is the... Oh, is that the accordion on the table there? It's hard to tell because it's so small. That's sweet. That's, that's a talented ghost. Accordions are hard to play if you're alive. But if you're dead, you've got to do the the squeezing motion as well as like playing the piano. They're hitting octaves there. Bum, bum. They're just going for it. That's sick. All I need now is like a, like an entire like bluegrass band of ghosts. You know, you got the accordion, you got the big like stand up bass, you got somebody with like a washboard. It'd be great. A ghost band in that house. I wouldn't be afraid. I'd be like, hey, can you teach me how to play that? I would love to know. Because I feel like if a ghost is playing music, it can't be that sinister. Music is beautiful. Music is, uh, you know, it's 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 life altering. It's 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 incredible. So if the ghost still wants to uh, jam out, still wants to rip some tunes. It's probably a nice ghost. What is that? What is what? <laughs> I told you. She told Should him. I dare to slam it. I dare you to slam that door. <laughs> Don't dare to slam, slam the door. House. Ghosts or not. Uh, okay. He's a really polite ghost and he doesn't slam it. No. Just for the record, it's oh. only Nick and I here. Oh my god, no! Oh my god! Oh. Whoa. So he's polite. He's oh. nice. <laughs> What a, what, a, what a good ghost. <laughs> the guy's like, we don't slam doors in this house. And the ghost's like, yeah, I get it. If I want my privacy, I'll just shut it nice and slow. But here's me proving that I uh, will not be slamming any doors whilst under your roof. Respecting the house rules. That is a good house guest right there. That's a ghost that we all would like to harbor. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you say? So, Jessica, if you're here, make your presence known. I heard there was a little curl mm -hmm. um, attached to this doll. And uh, if that's you, Jessica, this is a safe space. You are welcome to... Maybe don't say you feel weird next time and Jessica won't get cheesed and try to blow out your candles, you know? I'm telling oh, it's a safe space, but also you're making me feel really weird, Jessica. Why, why are you making me feel so weird? No, you gotta you gotta you gotta be a little a little bit smarter than that. You gotta play the game. Especially after that doll moved. I guess her eyes were closed, so she couldn't have possibly seen that. Talking to a little girl, you don't wanna make the little girl feel weird, right? Where are you, by the way? Like are you sitting in a basement? can't really tell what location this is. The floor looks like crappy, unfinished concrete, so it's gotta be comfortable. These are so small. Ashley. Are you, are you gonna help her? That's terrifying. You're in the woods and you hear stuff like that? Like, I guess you don't necessarily wanna get caught up in that, but like, you're not even gonna like, call somebody for help? Like, you're in a position to help. Somebody's obviously in deep distress in the middle of the woods. My goodness. I guess that's the thing is like, if you stumble across somebody in dire need of help, are you going to put yourself in the position where you also 
need help. I, I don't know what I would do. I mean, I worked, I worked in the woods for years. I was a camp counselor at a, at a, at a, at a conservation area. I don't know I can think of the name. I can't imagine what happened if I was just walking around with the kids and I heard that in the woods. What do you do? My goodness. What is it? A brick wall? Or walk? Oh! Is that a trick of the eye? A trick of the lens? Or was that a ghostly, ghastly ghoul? What if you tried to like pick that person up? What if you were like, oh, it's a hitchhiker, you pull over. Would they still disappear? Would they hop in the back? Hmm. Yeah, that's freaky. Oh boy. Do you think they saw it from far away and started filming? Or is it just like they have like a dash cam and it was something that they went back and revisited after seeing it out of the corner of their eye? Either way, that is disturbing. That's not something you want in the middle of the night, especially if you're driving alone down a dark and lonesome road. Holy smokes. In the middle of the desert? Like a UFO? Oh, I think it is supposed to be, oh. I mean, I, I, I get I get the gist. I see that it's supposed to be a UFO, but is it? Is this, does that look real to you? The way it zooms away? The way that it's just kind of like layered onto this f footage in the middle of the desert, in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> Hard to say for sure. It's a little bit extra questionable, if you ask me. You know, I'm no expert by, by any means, but I don't know if that UFO uh, can, can, be, can be verified. Hmm. This is the creepy story of the red dot. Oh, God. So one night a girl was sleeping when a giant spider crawled across her face. It stopped for a few minutes on her left cheek and then walked away. She woke up the next morning and looked in the mirror. She noticed a small red spot on her cheek but didn't think much of it. She went to school like usual. But when she came home from school, the red dot doubled in size and became a boil. So she booked an appointment with her doctor, but the doctor couldn't see her until the next day. She tried not to worry about it and went to bed. When she woke up the next morning, she screamed. Her boil burst open and there were thousands of little spiders crawling all over her. I just, I'm not a big fan of this kind of delivery of scary stories. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is one that like, you know what? If you shout it to Lucy, just the mention of spiders would be enough to get her going. But I was taken out of that experience by this young man in a tank top yelling at me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And isn't this just a modified version of a scary story to tell in the dark? Like the classic book series and recent feature film where there's a spider that bites you and then there's something growing inside your cheek. I just, I, 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 I don't know. I feel like there, there are better ways to uh, spook you with this story. Oh boy. What am I looking at here? Top corner, red circle, something's moving. Is another shadow person? Looks like it's hobbling. It's like somebody like with like a hunchback and a cane. Holy smokes. What is that? Nobody on the road seemed too bothered by it. Do you think it's something that only picked up by camera? Is it a ghost? Is it another shadow person? Is it an old shadow person? Is it somebody just wearing like reflective clothing that's hard for cameras to pick up just walking across the road? We may never know. Hi guys, welcome to Fact Friday. Today we are learning about the Colossal Squid. Oh, yes, that's a real I thing. I love the Colossal the Squid. The Colossal Squid is actually kind of a recent discovery. It is bigger than any other it squid is. we know it of. It is, it is. And it can reach a body mass of 1,091 pounds. I didn't know this. And if you didn't think that was scary enough, it's got hooks on its tentacles. Yeah, I know. Ew. Mm -hmm. First evidence ever found of a colossal squid was actually in the stomach of a sperm whale back in 1925. Girl. And then it took us almost 60 more years to find an adult living specimen. The largest living adult specimen we've ever captured measured about 33 feet in length. Imagine swimming in the water at that monstrosity. This guy's freaking me out. 
by body mass, it's the biggest squid that we know yep. of. But because it's they true. decompose so thoroughly when they pass oh, away, I didn't know that. all that we can find left over them is the beak, which is ginormous. That's their mouth. Hello. Maybe we'll never know just how big these guys can get. Oh my god. Do you think they might be responsible for the legend of the crack? Probably. Let me know. Honestly, probably. Probably. That's that's where else would that come from? And also, I did a video about this. See if you can find it. But uh, with Olivia, we did the colossal squid, and apparently there are scars on sperm whales from battles with them because they'll actually try and be like, ah, you whale, and the whales will be like, get off me. You know, um, so, but they're so big, like eight of me could fit inside one, I think. They're that huge. <gasps> but also I wouldn't have, like, in order for eight of me to go, like, to fit, I'd have to go through the beak, which means that would be very painful. <laughs> so I won't be visiting a colossal squid home anytime soon. No, oh, thank you. But this as soon guy as again. he got home, strange things started to happen. He began this to guy. sweat profusely, and his scalp would itch like crazy. Terrible, Aaron shot. tried everything to make the itch go away, but nothing oh, was working. Spiders, Eventually, isn't it? he couldn't take it anymore, so he called an ambulance and he was rushed to the hospital. When he got to the hospital, the doctor immediately started Slice. examining his scalp, Slice. but he could not believe what was living in his head. But before I no, tell you, wait. I found an app that shows you who your celebrity lookalike is, I and I guess mine's Kylie middle. Jenner. Thanks to my oh, bio, if you want to see who yours is, I don't. The doctor discovered four giant maggots That's... living underneath no. his scalp. And when he pulled them out, they were all still alive. Oh, I hate that. I hate that. That's like a friend of a friend of mine said. Like, that's like a story. Like, a friend of a friend of mine told me a spider crawled in my ear and laid babies. Ooh. No, thank you. I'm not into it. Not into that. Thank you. Let's move on, please, Chris. Is this going to play? Oh. It's not playing. Ooh. Oh, it is playing. Oops. Oh, oh man, I hope those are real. I would love it if mermaids were real, man. But why, if they were, if those are real, then how did they, why were they buried on land? And if they were buried on land, why do they still have a fish tail? Cause don't mermaids, when they come on land, get legs? Oh, I mean, that might only be Ariel because she made a deal with Ursula I, I, I say fake. I say fake. That just doesn't make any sense. They would be buried in the, uh, I don't know, on the ocean floor and become fossils there, not six feet under. Okay, there we go. Fake. Got it. Scientists okay. have read it. What are some scary scientific discoveries that most of the public is unaware of? Many people may be silent carriers for mad cow disease and won't know for another decade or so. Once the symptoms begin, cognitive impairment, memory loss, hallucinations, etc., you usually die within months. There is no cure or treatment. Well, I'll add that to a list of information I didn't need to know. Thank you. All right. I can only deal with one crazy disease. I don't want another one. All right. Oh, okay. That's that's a lot. Mad cow disease. I always think it's a great name, but I don't want to die from that. Like I don't want to be in like heaven or wherever. And like be standing waiting like how'd you die? I don't know, plane crash bass, dude. And then I'm just like mad cow disease. And like, oh, that's it. And then I just feel like a loser there too. Today I want to talk about one of Canada's largest abandoned mental hospitals, Riverview. Ooh, it's in Coquitlam, BC, just around an hour away from downtown Vancouver. Like I said, it's big and abandoned. You can explore it with your friends as long as you don't no. get caught. It used to have over 4,000 patients in the 1950s where they infamously practice electroshock Ugh. therapy. Ugh. It's a very creepy place to explore. I would recommend not going by yourself and go with a friend. It even oh, has its own graveyard. Thanks for the recommendation, honestly. Um, oh man, that would creep me out. I. I would, I mean, I, I said earlier that I, I would try to avoid all those like horror film scenarios that would be like, oh, this is definitely the beginning of a horror film. I'm not going to do this. But oh man, I love old abandoned buildings. I really want to go explore them. So it'd be kind of like fighting an instinct of like, oh, what would you find? Or maybe something cool would happen as opposed to horrific, like something supernatural. I was like, oh, a spirit. Oh, I shouldn't even. 
I'm too much. I'm too much, even for me. Time. You see, these people bidding already know that they're taking a gamble on what could be something very strange in their lockers. But at the end of season one, in an episode called Unlocked by Low, the whole cast was sitting around a poker table and discussing the weirdest and strangest things they've ever found in a locker. Now, when they were going around the poker table and taking turns talking about what they found, most of them were pretty normal. Strange, but normal. Except for when it got to Daryl Sheets, and his was a little bit worse than everybody else's. Daryl Sheets claimed that he found a body down in San Diego, California in 1988. He said it wasn't a very pleasant situation, and he doesn't really want to talk about it a lot. I mean, I would imagine finding a body would not be a very pleasant situation. Did he call the police, though? Oh, man. I mean... I, I mean... The locker bay in my high school was pretty messy, so I can only imagine what was in those lockers, but uh, that's that's the worst. That would be absolutely the worst to find. If you were scared by the giant bat discovery earlier this oh, year, then wait that. until you see this. Shocked workers in Mexico discovered a rat the size of a car when cleaning the sewers. Some people fled in fear when they saw it on the street. However, 2020 isn't getting worse. It turns out it was only Splinter? a Halloween prop. A woman named Evelyn Lopez claimed the rat was hers and lost it in a storm years ago. But still, comment what you would do if you saw this on the street. That's exactly what I would do. I'd be like, Splinter? Dude, train me. I'm in. I'm not a turtle, but I think I can... I'm a fast learner. That's what I would do if I saw a giant rat. Are you kidding? Or I would literally just stand and wait for Wesley to come and save me from Princess Bride. Oh. Okay. Looks like a, a school project. We used to do those at school. It was a lot of fun. Survive in the wilderness. Oh, it's gonna get creepy, isn't it? It's gonna, is there some? Should we go here at night? Ah, oh, it's your prerogative, man. Like, who am I to answer for you? You know, Brent thinks big. Should you go? I think you want to go there. Like people are like, should I? Like the people who are like, should I? Should I? Should I do it? You're like, you want to do it. Just do it. It's fine. Would I do it? No. Want to know why? Because probably someone lives there. And they'll be like, dude, you don't pay rent. Get out. Three teens were using an app called Randonautica, which sends you to random locations in your area. <coughs> Some people find cool hangout spots, <laughs> and others find weird <laughs> things in the forest. However, these teens were led to a suitcase that was hidden underneath a bridge. A body As they it. got close to it, they noticed a horrible smell it's coming from it, so it. they decided to open oh, it up. Yeah. But before I tell you what was inside, I found an app that shows you who your celebrity look like is, and I guess mine's Kylie Jenner. Links in my bio if you want to see who yours Thanks. is. They found what they thought was a dead body, so <sighs> they decided to call the police. And when the police arrived, they confirmed that there were dead body parts inside. I don't know why I started laughing. I think it was because of the way he was talking just made me go like, Oh man, dude, like there was like this dead body in a bag. Whoa, man. Like it's like, no, dude, that's really bad. That's not a good thing. See, I'm laughing because it's just like so, so ridiculous. Um, that's awful. Guys, if you feel like what you're about to do is the beginning of a horror film, don't do it. Just don't. Just walk away. Just walk away and go on living a happy life, you know? Residents of two villages in northern Kazakhstan have been struck by a strange sleeping illness since 2012. People would suddenly fall asleep during regular activities and remain in slumber for several days at a time. They would wake up with no memories of that period. Even pets fell prey to the illness. After three years of research, scientists figured out the culprit an abandoned Soviet-era uranium mine in the area. Carbon monoxide and other hydrocarbons from the abandoned mine wafted into the air, causing oxygen levels to drop in the villages, and this ultimately led to the sleeping epidemic. I never heard about this. I mean, perhaps this got out and uh, I just wasn't aware. But anyway, that's absolute frightening because, okay, first of all, I was like, mm, doesn't sound too bad. I, I could do with a nap, you know? I would wouldn't mind falling asleep any place, any time, you know? I mean, I tend to, regardless. But anyway, this is way more dangerous than that. Anyway, you can die. This could have killed them. I don't think they're dead, though. They're just sleeping. How do you know, though? They could just be dead. They're dead or it's like, I'm alive, but I'm dead. I feel like I'm dead. I'm alive, but I'm dead. 
I'm awake, but I'm dead. For close to 40 years, the most peculiar thing has been washing up Britney's beaches. Over and over again, locals have stumbled across bright orange novelty Garfield telephones. Sometimes they're merely fragments and sometimes they're fully intact. Either way, it's a little weird, that's for sure. So where are all these cartoon cats coming from? As it turns out, back in 1983, a cargo ship carrying a crate full had one of its containers swept off. The container had become lodged in a secluded coastal 100-foot-deep cave under the cliffs of Plowerzel. A really strange discovery to make. Imagine just walking down the beach and you're just finding numerous Garfield phones. I mean, out of all of the kind of TV show characters to find, I find Garfield the most un unsettling. I think it was ever since that Garfield SCP came to light and I was like, oh, this like, I feel wildly uncomfortable now every time I see Garfield. He makes me uncomfy. I don't like him and I don't want his phone. So I'm not going to that beach. I'm gonna make my own phone. Sea monsters are a hot topic online. And what country is better yeah. known for them than Japan? Well, in 1977, a carcass of a sea monster was discovered by a Japanese fishing vessel in the sea. The fishermen caught the dragon looking creature and took this photograph. However, they had to dump it back in the water as to not spoil the fish they were catching. It looks like a plesiosaur carcass. This was not a dinosaur carcass. It's actually more likely to be a decomposing shark carcass. The shark sides tend to droop down, much like wings, and the amino acid in the water causes the bones to wear down too. Uh, okay, sure. I mean, I believe you. Maybe it's a shark. But I look at that and I don't think shark, even if it did decompose and started to sag at the sides, also, wouldn't out of curiosity you think, okay, let me just dump the rest of the sh these fish back and let's take this strange carcass that we don't really know what it is back to shore, see what, what's going on here, see what we've just discovered. Surely, I guess life's not really like a movie. In a movie that would have happened. It would have been groundbreaking. These people missed opportunity. It's a dinosaur for sure. Back in 1845, English explorer Sir John Franklin set sail for Canada with 128 crew members and three years worth of food. Franklin and his crew simply vanished without a trace. Multiple search expeditions were sent out, over 30 in fact. 14 years after the initial vanishing, the first bones were found. First, the ships became stuck in Arctic ice. Unable to free them from their entrapment, the explorers succumbed not to starvation or cold, but to disease such as tuberculosis. In 2014, a Canadian robot submarine located the wreckage of one of Franklin's ships under the Arctic ice. Okay, I know this story. Yay, this is great. Because this is what the TV show The Terror is based on. And I've watched The Terror and I've actually... Well, I've been in the process of reading the book for quite some time, but I keep shafting it, unfortunately. It's a great story, though. Yeah, the two boats, they were heading to the, the Arctic Passage, or trying to get there. Um, boats got lodged in ice, and then they froze to death and died, ran out of food. But in the book and the show, they obviously take it to extremes and say that there was some kind of creature. And now I can't remember the name of the creature, but it was very, like, giant polar bear meets abominable snowman and then it killed everyone. Um, I think the real, more realistic answer is that they just died because of starvation and freezing. Here's dozens of planes and ships carrying thousands of people are lost in an area of the sea named the Bermuda Triangle. It's commonly thought that it's unknown what the reason for this is. A popular theory is alien abduction, as UFOs are sometimes reported by plane pilots before they vanish. So it can't be that. Well, little known research has concluded the real truth behind the Bermuda Triangle. The area actually has lots of air bubbles in the water. These can grow to massive sizes and then pop, destroying planes and ships alike. And of course, making them sink or fall to the depths of the waters. And as for the UFO reports, the UFOs are likely just the bubbles rising into the air. Interesting, I actually didn't know there was a reason as to why people disappeared over the triangle. I just thought it was all theory and I thought it was actually speculation that that's exactly where they disappeared. Air bubbles, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that that could cause disappearances into the ocean. Um, I still think something great is at play here. Again, I'm gonna circle right back to the movie Triangle. It's for sure, like it's legit. The triangle's about the Bermuda Triangle. And then there was a haunted cruise ship. There was a cruise ship. Oh my God, it all connects. All these unsolved mysteries that are now finally solved connect. There was a, a cruise ship, Bermuda Triangle, death, 
It was amazing. Bigfoot is said to be a Sasquatch, which is a mythical and dangerous creature. It apparently resides in Yakima, Washington, and there have been reported sightings of him ever since 1811. The most <laughs> prominent piece of evidence that leads some to believe that Bigfoot is real is this photograph. It's been featured in many documentaries, newspapers, and other studies about the existence of Bigfoot. But this photo was fake. It was taken back in the 1950s by Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin. The image is actually of their friend Bob Hiromius in a suit. They publicly admitted it was fake back in 1964, but for some reason, the image is still evidence of Bigfoot's existence to some. Okay, and well, I think we all knew that picture was fake. It was just as real as the Loch Ness Monsters picture, you know? They're all fake pictures. There's no real pictures. Bigfoot's not gonna let you take a picture. He's gonna get you before you get him. I don't believe Bigfoot, as in one individual entity, is real, but I do think there's giant creatures out there in the woods. There has to be. Like, this isn't a far f stretch, I don't think. Like, I feel like this is could be real. I do believe that there's, like, at least, like, larger creatures out there that maybe we haven't seen, or um, a similar in description to Bigfoot. This ship is often referenced in popular culture, that is because it's one of the most puzzling and mysterious ships of all time. Since the 1700s, sailors have reported seeing a ship floating through the air. And thanks to this, the ship has been nicknamed the Flying Dutchman. Legend has it that the ghost ship is home to ghosts of anyone who has passed away at sea. But scientists have finally come up with an answer to this mystery. The sailors who see the Flying Dutchman are actually experiencing a mirage called Fata Morgana. It's an optical illusion that makes faraway ships appear to be floating. So really all the sailors are seeing are other ships. And it's simply an optical distortion that makes it look like they're floating. True. I feel like I've experienced this with my own two eyes, not the Flying Dutchman. And also, wasn't the Flying Dutchman in... Oh, no. I was gonna say, wasn't it in Pirates of the Caribbean? I'm quite literally thinking of the Black Pearl. Anyway, I've heard of the Flying Dutchman. It has appeared in, like, folktales. I feel like I've experienced that optical illusion. When I was home in Devon, uh, one time, there's a, there were a lot of, um, boats. And there was a cruise ship in the distance and it looked like it was floating but it wasn't it was in the water or maybe it was the flying dutchman now i've really got to think about this maybe i saw a ghost ship Evro anson plane took off from an airfield in patricia bay in british columbia for a routine navigation exercise just after leaving the runway the plane and the four men on board vanished the Canadian military carried out extensive searches, but not a single trace of the plane was found. The Anson mystery carried over for 70 years before finally, in 2013, we started to uncover the truth. On Vancouver Island, a few workers from a logging company accidentally stumbled across the remains of both the plane and then one and then all of the passengers. While the cause of the crash is still fraught with uncertainty, poor weather is believed to have played a significant role. Damn, it's like D.B. Cooper, except one man didn't disappear. It was an entire plane disappeared. That's crazy. Uh, well, I'm glad they've kind of figured it out now. I mean, there's not much to say about this one other than that sucks. I mean, I don't want to go down in a plane and I don't want to go lost. I don't want to go lost. I don't want to get lost. I found a tweet recently that was like, imagine being an episode on unsolved mysteries that people skip over because it's too boring. <laughs> it's like, wow, lived and died for nothing. In areas of southern Africa and western Australia, there are circular patches of barren land surrounded by grass resembling polka dots. Oh. Dubbed fairy circles, the locals believe that these are footprints of God or other divine beings. Scientists claim that the most acceptable explanation comes from a computer simulation that found that the rings can be explained by using insect colonies and plant behavior. The simulation pointed to a species of termites that colonize by constructing honeycomb patterns in these areas and feeding on roots of grass. It started fine and then it just proceeded to get worse and worse. Okay, our computer simulation said this, and I was like, simulation, so you're saying this is a simulation. Ha, life is fake, nothing's real, we're in a computer game. Well, it's not a game. And then they're like, just kidding, it's insects. Ugh. And the idea of insects creating all these tiny little holes in the ground because they're nesting, 
it makes me feel physically sick. In May of 1937, the hype around the Hindenburg airship was huge, Ooh, but sadly failed miserably, exploding into uncontrollable flames in midair before crashing back down to Earth. Of the 100 people on board, 35 never made it out. Scientists had a number of theories, including lightning, explosive paint properties, and the possibility of a bomb on board. A team of experts came to the conclusion that either a faulty gas valve or a broken wire caused hydrogen to leak into the ventilation shafts. Meanwhile, the entire airship had been charged with static electricity from a thunderstorm. The static caused a spark, which ignited the leaked hydrogen and ultimately proved to be the disaster's catalyst. It's very sad, especially if people died on board. That's definitely not the most ideal. Um, this also reminds me of Bioshock, if anyone played that game, or Bioshock uh, Infinite. But I'm not sad that those things don't exist because they're really, like, I feel the same way about hot air balloons. I find things like that very unsettling and I don't know why. First of all, that is way too big and if I saw that just floating, like blimps, I feel the same way about blimps. Too big, stop floating near me. Like, go float away, you know? Float away. So I'm not too upset that this is not a thing that we deal with in life, you know? <laughs> oh my god. <gasps> okay, that was genuinely quite terrifying because that was real. That was a real shark. And that was a real camera. And that shark was not around. It was like, I am going to eat you and I'm going to enjoy it. Imagine being in the water and that emerges. Again, this is why I don't go in the water because a shark would emerge. I don't, sometimes I have good luck, other times I do not. And I think the day that I'm unlucky is the day that I get eaten by a shark, to be honest. So I'm just not gonna test those waters. Oh my God, no, 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 Ooh, that was just a little bit traumatic, to be honest. Why is this guy chasing after this giant beast of a snake? Nothing should be this big, let alone snakes. I hated how big his head was. Put it away, that's how I feel. Put your head away, put your head down. Just leave me alone, that's how I feel. That I hate that. I hate snakes, it makes me so upset. I don't like it. Oh, water is back. Oh, like I can feel my stomach dropping. Oh. Oh, I can feel my stomach going. Oh my God. Oh, that's like, that's like being on a roller coaster. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> they're just laughing. Well, I guess this is normal behavior for them. Like, they're used to this kind of sea atmosphere, this sea nonsense. But I know that feeling. I don't know if anyone's been on, like, a fishing boat before. When I lived in Alaska, I went fishing. We went on a fishing boat, and oh my god, on the way there, it was like this. On the waters, and on the way back. It was like that, and my stomach kept flipping. It was like I was on a roller coaster. It's horrible, people throwing up next to me. No, no thanks. <gasps> what the f Was that a shark? We can confirm that was a shark. Kind of looked like a dolphin, but probs a shark. I don't think dolphins, like, are there. But that was terrifying. God, these people, they take risks every day. Potential of falling off their little board, potential of drowning, potential of being eaten or run over a shark with their little board, you know? That's horrifying. He was so chill about it. That would be, if that happened to me, it'd be the last time I was ever in the water. Ever. Not a chance. You can't make me go back in. I knew something was coming because I've seen Paranormal Activity, I just couldn't remember what part of the movie that was, and it just happened to be the ending. Also, there are two different endings to this movie and I can never remember which is the, like, the real one, or the theatrical one, I don't know. 
I've seen both where I actually can't remember both endings. I just remember one where she's like rocking back and forth on the floor for like hours. And then there's another one. I think it involves police where she kills them. Can't really remember. Oh no, 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 no. You would not catch me there. <gasps> oh, f that. Oh, it just wants to play though, kinda. I can't tell with lions, like after watching Tiger King. Uh, I mean, that's nothing to go off of. Um, they just seem like giant dogs, you know, maybe throw a ball, they'll bring it back. But they'll also kill you in the process. I don't know, they just seem like they want to have fun, like when he's tapping the wall and then running away, or he's scared. I can't tell. Either way, lions, I just want to give them a big hug. It's like that really sad video on YouTube of those uh, two guys that raised a little cub and then they had... Yeah, baby lion's called a cub, right? Lion? Lion baby. Baby lion cub. And then they had to let it go and be in the wild in Africa? I don't know, somewhere. And then they reunited with it and it still remembered who they were and they it gave it them a big hug and they lived. So I think that would happen with me. Let the sea out of oh, f this. No, this is my worst nightmare. No, 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 no. These videos terrify me. I heard it for film. Yeah, hard up a film. Oh, oh my god, look at that knife. Oh. Those videos, honestly, sometimes I go down a YouTube rabbit hole where I watch videos like that because sometimes I want to be scared, which is why you guys all ask me why I do those spider videos. It's because I give them to myself because I know, you know, it'll make me feel something. But anyway, those videos terrify me. Those giant boats on the roaring seas and the waves coming everywhere, like, oh, it freaks me the f out. You'd not get me on one of those boats, not a chance you'd have to f tie me up in one. Oh, leave it alone. To be fair, that guy deserves to get attacked by a shark. You're going into his home and poking him with a stick. Leave him alone, you're in his home. Like, sharks aren't coming onto land and trying to stab you with a stick, so leave him alone. You know what? This is the first time I'm gonna defend a shark and be like, F off humans. He didn't deserve that, he was just swimming in his own waters. The problem is, is that we shouldn't be in the water. We've, we've established this. We shouldn't be in the water. Sharks live there. That's their home. They don't come onto land and say, F*** you, I'm going to be here now. Do they? No, we go to them and we're like, screw you, sharks. Anyway, that's how I feel about it. Okay, it didn't get me, but it was shocking. That's all I can say. I was shocked. Um, I knew as soon as I saw them in the water, large gathering of people, shark was going to come and kill at least one of them, and that's exactly what it did. And they deserve it, to be honest, because no one should be in the water. And if you're in the water, you deserve to be eaten by a shark. The species is actually a very new discovery, and was only first described in 2006. The first specimen of the species was however collected in 1968, but was wrongly identified to be a similar looking snake species, the Persian horned viper, as it seems they missed the spider-like tail that makes this species so distinct. It's a member of the family Viperidae, making it a true viper, and also making it very venomous, so don't approach it if you ever see one in the wild, though I doubt many ever will. No, you honestly don't have to warn me not to approach this snake-spider hybrid, because I just wouldn't. Like, I, there's no, I don't think I'll ever encounter a snake and be like, I think I'll approach. I barely want to approach people, let alone creatures. So, don't need to warn me, this sucker's not coming near me. Venomous f 